Welcome to a video tutorial of Auction RPM. My name is Dan Zumwalt and I'll be your guide as we discuss auction simulcasting in Auction RPM. Auction simulcasting companies such as Live Auctioneers, Proxybid, NAA Live, BidSpotter, and the like are companies that make it possible for you as the auctioneer to simulcast your auction through the internet. By simulcasting, what we're talking about here is people at their home would be able to connect into the internet and connect into these simulcasting companies and they'd be able to see your auction as it progresses one by one through the different lots that are pre-lotted in your auction. Those people would not only be able to see that but then they would be able to interactively bid uh, against the, the bidders that are sitting in front of the auctioneer. In order to do this you first would need to pre-lot your auction. That means going into Auction RPM and telling Auction RPM about what's going to be sold and preferably recording pictures about the items that will be sold. Once that's done, then you would be able to go into Auction RPM and prepare the files that these companies would need in order to do their work. To do that, let's first go to our desktop on our computer and on our desktop, I'm going to right mouse click, and not on an icon, just in the desktop area. You might have a picture there. I have black, but that's fine. And then I'm going to choose New. And under there, I'm going to choose Folder. I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to create this. I'm going to give this a name. I'll say Exported uh, Data for Uh, live auctioneers. So we'll use live auctioneers in this illustration. You can name this folder for whatever you'd like here. And I'm going to click down here and that will lock in that change for that uh, folder name. Now let's go back into Auction RPM here. And under here I'm going to go to Tools and then I'll click on Simulcasting. And that's where we're going to find the options to create the files. Now you can see under Simulcasting we have Live Auctioneers, we have Proxy Bid, we have NAA Live, and these different options here are what is used in order to create the uh, exported files that will go to those particular companies. Again, what we're talking about here is creating files that will go to those companies that will tell those companies what you're selling, as well as the photos for those items. So now what I'll do, since uh, this illustration we're going to use Live Auctioneers, I'll click on this option here, Create Export Live Auctioneers Files. It'll ask what auction I want to export to the Live Auctioneers system. And this, these checkboxes indicate whether I wish to include estimates or include reserved prices in the data that goes to Live Auctioneers. I'm going to leave those unchecked and I'll hit Create Files. Now it wants to know where I want to save that information. I'll click on Desktop and then I'll go over here to where I've created that folder uh, in that we in, uh, just created a few moments ago and we called it exported data for live auctioneers so I'll double click on that folder and so now I'm sitting inside of that folder here and now I'll hit save and now what it's going to do is it's going to open up Microsoft Excel and create the files that we wanted. How do I know they were created? Let's hit OK here I'll minimize Auction RPM and now let's double click on this icon here and see what it gives us. Well there we have it. We can see that it created an Excel spreadsheet here and it created two image files. Now in this illustration we selected the new sample auction that we've been working with in this video tutorial series and in that particular auction we've created just a few items and we've only attached a couple of pictures to those uh, items that were in that auction. But of course in your scenario when you're uh, exporting a real auction to live auctioneers or Proxibit or whatever service you use, you of course would have many photos that you would probably export to those services. Now at this point it's up to you and the service you're working with to get that information to the service. Uh, that service would have various instructions that they would need you to follow in, as to how to transfer these files to their services. Sometimes it's a uh, FTP uh, connection. Uh, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol 
and it's a method that is used to transfer files over the internet from one computer to another. Or they might have a different uh, manner of up updating and uploading these files to them. So we would need to defer to the instructions that you would receive from that particular service that you're using at that moment. Now once these files have been uploaded to whatever service you're using at that moment, then you're going to be given the opportunity of seeing over the internet the the uh, auction itself, the catalog. Different services have different serv uh, options and services that they give you, such as maybe the garnering of absentee bids or left bids before the auction starts. This is all part of what you'd want to talk to them about. And the other thing too is that each service has their own schedule of fees that you would need to consider before choosing which service you wish to use. Now you'll notice that with live auctioneers we have this option here called end of auction processing. Uh, right now under Proxybit and NA Live we do not have that option available yet. We're talking to them at this moment and uh, hopefully we'll be releasing a new version of Auction RPM that will have the end of auction processing for those other services. But end of auction processing allows for the after auction settlement of the bids that have been entered in through the internet to this service, to live auctioneers and it would transfer that winning bid information into Auction RPM. The way it works is during the auction you would create one bidder, uh, a certain bidder number, that would represent any bids that were won through the live auctioneer system. Let's say it's bidder number 500. So any bid that was won during the auction through live auctioneers, that gets a bidder number of 500. Then what happens is once the auction is completed and you go into end of auction processing here, you would uh, select a couple of different items and then you would settle out with each bidder that won items for your auction through the live auctioneer's system. And in doing so, it would go in, it would determine the bidder number that uh, was used during the auction, it would create a new buyer record if necessary for this live auctioneer's buyer, it would register that buyer for this new auction. It would change the bidder number on the items that they won to their new bidder number that it just then created. And then it would produce an invoice for them that can thereafter be sent out through the email system. So there's a lot of ca uh, capabilities that are built into the end of auction processing. Uh, if you're using live auctioneers, if you'd like more information about that, please give our offices a call and we'll be happy to assist you in setting up that end of auction processing for live auctioneers. Well, that'll conclude our discussion of auction simulcasting in Auction RPM. If you have any questions or comments about this video or any of the others in this video tutorial series, please give us a call. The phone number is 209-588-1232. Thanks for listening.